The best rifles and cartridges for fur. We're talking red fox, badger, coyote, raccoon, bobcat. Fur, nature's finest. A lot of folks will say the only reason to hunt and shoot game is to eat the meat. I don't agree because there have been a long tradition of harvesting fur. This is nature's version of petrochemical fleece. <laughs> this stuff is sustainable, biodegradable, all organic. Why wouldn't we utilize an abundant natural resource? And many of us do. And to do it, if we're not trappers, we're probably fur hunters. And to be a fur hunter, you need the right rifle and the right cartridge. Fortunately, there are many of them to choose from. Well, you might say, unfortunately, there are many to choose from because it gets a bit confusing. You can use all sorts of rifles from a basic single shot to the classic bold action rifles to heavy barreled heavy wide stock so-called long range varmint rifles to the ever more popular modern sporting rifles, the AR platform. And a lot of guys like this, for coyotes especially. We're going to cover all of the cartridges that I think are viable. There are many, many more, but we're gonna pull one out of each caliber and we're gonna have six of them. They're all going to represent a different caliber that I think work pretty darn well for taking fur. So let's dive right in to the best cartridges for taking fur. First up, the diminutive 17 calibers. And this is the diminutive of the diminutive. Well, there's one smaller, the 17 Mach 2. But this one is the HMR. And why did I choose this one to represent the 17s? Because I think this is probably the smallest one you can get away with. I have used this effectively on Bobcat and Red Fox and Raccoon and Coyote. I wouldn't recommend it as a top choice, but there are a lot of folks, that's all they have. And in some parts of the country, they can't use anything much bigger. You have to use a rim fire. So this one can do the job, but you got to get close. We're going to see some numbers and some energies and some velocities a little bit later. Second choice, 20 calibers, 204 Ruger. This is a pretty hot number. Wait till you see the numbers on the charts with that guy. It's burning up the landscape. Next in line is a good practical choice, the 223 Remington with the 5.56. This is a go-to cartridge for a lot of guys, and it really can handle everything up to and including coyotes, no problem. Not absolutely the best because the next one in line I think is superior, especially if you're in big open country and you need to shoot a long way. The 22250 Remington, you can't pass that one up. My absolute favorite. Then we step up to the 24 calibers and we use the 243 Winchester as a good representative. Wait till you see the numbers on what that thing can do. Finally, we get into the 25s, and I don't go any higher than the 25-06. You get much bigger than that, and you are threatening to destroy the pelts you're trying to collect. So let's now go to the numbers and see how these all compare. All right, here are the ballistic numbers. We've got our column for the cartridges and the bullets and their BC. Then we have the muzzle velocity, the muzzle energy, the maximum point blank range, and a four inch target. That means your bullet's not going to go more than two inches high at any distance, and that's generally around 150 yards. And then when it's two inches below your target, that's your maximum point blank range. And then we have the wind drift column and the recoil column. This one's really going to hurt. We start off with the 17 HMR. That baby will go 2,550 feet per second to generate 245 foot pounds of energy. That is not much, but with that little 17 game bullet on there, pretty explosive. Gets inside and tears up the vitals quickly and can kill very fast, but you've got to be extremely precise with your shots. Probably keep them within 125 yards max. That's what I would recommend. Your muzzle energy out there at your distance for maximum point blank range is what you really worry about. 82 foot pounds at 179 yards. That's your maximum point blank range and you only have 82 foot pounds of energy left in that bullet. So poof, you had better be precise. The wind, 10 miles an hour, right angle wind, it's going to drift that bullet 12 inches. The recoil is a brutal 0.39 foot pounds. <laughs> I think you can handle that one. Next up, the 204 Ruger in the 20 calibers. 
Next up is the 204 Ruger, and this is a really good option. It shoots fairly light bullets very fast. Look at the numbers on this one. 32 grain VMAX bullet, the BC is 0 0.210. Muzzle velocity is 4,225 feet per second. That's a screamer. 1,268 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. That translates to a maximum point-blank range of 308 yards for 512 foot-pounds of remaining energy at that distance. You're only going to have 10 and a half inches, no, 10, just 10 inches of wind deflection. And the recoil is going to be 3.56. I think we can handle that. I'm not so sure the Coyotes can. Next up is the 223 Remington, the good old classic. The 223 Remington is going to be throwing a 53 grain VMAX bullet because it has a really high BC compared to its weight. And then you can push it a little bit faster than a 55 grain bullet. The uh, bullet is carrying a 0 0.290 BC rating. That means if you throw it at 3,465 feet per second, it will carry 1,423 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle and it'll have a maximum point blank range of 274 yards and it'll retain 760 foot-pounds of energy at that distance. Now you're starting to get a little bit of a safety factor in here. Plenty of energy out there. Looking at about eight inches of wind deflection on that one, 5.8 foot pounds on the shoulder. Nothing to talk about. Now let's step up to my favorite, 22 250 Remington. Shoots the same bullet as the 223s. I generally like a 55 grain bullet, but what I found with fur is that a very frangible 50 grain bullet will get inside and tend to stay there. Blow up inside, take that animal out instantly, and you have no fur damage. But you have to hit them squared up right in the middle. Don't go on the edges. So the 53 grain VMAX, same BC of 0.290, Throw that thing at 3,700 feet per second, 1,654 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle, more than enough, and that will carry out to 291 yards for your maximum point-blank range and still hang out to 848 foot-pounds of energy. And that's why I love it. The wind deflection is only seven and a half inches, and you've got a bare 6.4 foot-pounds of recoil on your shoulder. Then we step up to what a lot of guys like for a little more oomph, a little more sure kill on those bigger coyotes, the 243 Winchester. And in this category, of course, you can go with the six millimeter Remington or the new six millimeter Creedmoor or any of the other sixes, the 24 calibers. Little bit heavy for my taste for really getting the best fur out of the deal. But if you shoot some of the lighter bullets, uh, seems like a pretty good compromise. So 75 grain VMAX, a 0 0.330 on your ballistics coefficient at 3,500 feet per second. That's really stepping out there. 2,134 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. Doesn't that suggest to you you're going to have some fur damage on those closer cold coyotes? Hmm, I think so. And especially on those fragile little red fox. So be a little bit careful with this one. Now that thing's going to carry out to 284 yards for your maximum point blank range and still have over 1,200 foot pounds of energy. So that bullet has really got the power. Wind drift is really nice. Six and a half inches is all at your maximum point blank range. And you're going to have a little more recoil now. 11.4 foot pounds. It's still nothing as far as what you're feeling on your shoulder. Um, and then we step up to the big 25, 25 on six. A lot of guys like this for the wind deflection benefits, but we're going to see something interesting with this one. I'm going to shoot a 75 grain bullet for the same reason I like the lighter bullets in the 243. It's going to damage that fur if you go to much heavier bullets, unless you get a really stout one that doesn't open much at all. But if you're thinking varmints, light bullets, really fast, flat shooting, you want to go with the lighter ones. 75 grain is just about the lightest you can get in the 25 calibers. This one has a... Um, BC of 2.9, and it's going to go 3,700 feet per second. So yeah, that baby is screaming. 2,280 foot-pounds of more than enough energy at the muzzle. It'll carry out to 291 yards for your maximum point blank range and still hang on to 1,200 foot-pounds of energy. Notice that's just a little bit less than the 243 is doing. We'll discuss that in a second here. The wind deflection is actually more than the 243 at 7.4 inches. Now, why is that? We'll explain that in a bit too. And your recoil, 14.9. It really doesn't amount to much. Even in a lightweight little rifle like this single shot I was shooting, it just doesn't amount to anything. So don't worry about recoil with any of these unless you like to see your strikes. 
A nice thing about a light recoiling rifle that's really heavy, like this heavyweight varmint Savage right here, in a small caliber like the 204 or the 17, you're probably going to be able to see the bullet either miss or hit and know just exactly where it was. And that's kind of nice. So you might want to go with a heavier rifle and or one of the lighter shooters here so that you can do that. Otherwise, I don't know that you want to be messing around um, with a big heavy rifle because think of this. In my experience, hunting coyotes and any called animal, they quite often come quickly and close. And when I used to hunt with these big boys, I would often find that I was moving too slowly to take advantage of those. These are great for really long reach, but man, when things are happening quickly, you want a shorter, lighter, smaller, handier, faster moving rifle. And a lot of guys like the MSRs, the AR-15 styles, especially on coyotes, because sometimes they come in bunches. I have called a maximum of six at a time, but there are guys who get seven and eight. <laughs> I'm sure someone out there is going to say they've got nine or 10. But when a lot of coyotes come in, and if you can shoot well and not get too excited, having some extra rounds in your magazine is not a bad option. And that's why a lot of guys, I think, like the auto loaders. I have never found that I needed them enough to justify using it just because I enjoy my bold actions and my single shots. And I generally get one or two coyotes at a time. And I find that even with a single shot, I can shoot one coyote, call again, stop the other one and get another shot off. And on rare occasions, I can get three that way. So suit yourself on that. But I wouldn't get too excited about having a big heavy rifle unless I was glassing and stalking and taking long range shots at coyotes. But for general calling work where things are close, stick with a lighter, handier rifle. Now, let's look at some interesting numbers on the 22-250 versus the 25 odd 6 Remember, we're shooting a 53 grain bullet. Now, most people would say, well, that's going to deflect more in the wind. You should go to a 25 odd 6 on a windy day and that bigger, heavier 75 grain bullet. But look at the wind deflection column, the drift column on both of those. They both deflect exactly the same, 7.4 inches, 7.4 inches, because their BCs are the same and so are their muzzle velocities. And as I always say, if your muzzle velocity and your ballistics coefficient are identical, your drops and drifts will be identical. The heavier bullet will carry more energy downrange. That's the only difference. That's one of the reasons I like that 22250 so much. It's a little bit faster and flatter shooting and better in the wind than the 223, but it doesn't damage the pelts as much as the 25 out six or the 243. Now, on all of these, of course, you can go with different bullets and end up with different numbers. You can go heavier on the 17s to get a little more punch in your animal, go to a 20 grain bullet. You can go to a center fire 17. There's the Hornet and the Fireball and the 17 Remington, and those are viable options as well. Um, and in the 22s, there's a lot more 22s out there that'll do similar things. Some of them fall between the 223 and the 220 Swift. So I would say, which every one, whichever one of those turns your crank, which are the one you like to shoot or you can get in your favorite rifle, they are all going to work. But think about retaining the pelts on these animals. I think that's the whole idea is to collect those pelts without damaging them excessively with too much bullet, too explosive of a bullet. So those are my picks for the uh, best varmint rifles and cartridges. Uh, why don't you write in and tell me what you like best and what you found to be most successful. But this little old 22-250 is the one I generally roll with. My second option is a 204. The rest of them, yeah, I'll use them from time to time. But these are my winners. Thanks for listening. This is Ron Spomer on Artist and Shoot Straight.